All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash True and Fun Out. As we are getting closer and closer to episode 100 of Throwback Tunes, I need to figure out what I'm going to do for that episode. But anywho, here we go with today's album that I'm going to review, and it's Pain is Love by Ja Rule. You know how long it's been since I reviewed a Ja Rule album? Since episode 3, when I reviewed rule 336 i crap you not it's been so long dog. so speaking of the number three this is jaru's third studio album and this joint came out october 2nd 2001 so at this point i was starting my uh senior year in high school actually wow so this was done under Def jam and mother inc records so this was at the time they were still known as murder inc before they changed the name to uh, the inc i think they did change the name to the inc eventually but anywho moving on the album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and was supported by three singles. We'll get more of that later. It was certified triple platinum by the RIAA for selling over 3 million copies. And there's a sequel for this album, which I haven't heard yet, called Pain Is Love 2, and that came out 2012. So, let's get on with the accomplishments, rather, for this album. So, in the charts, that's right. So, this album was number one in the... Billboard 200, as I mentioned, it was also number one in the top RB slash hip hop albums. Number six out in Australia, the ARIA charts. Number three in the Canadian album charts. 38th in the GFK Entertainment charts out in Germany. 24th in the Irish album charts out in Ireland. Number one in the official New Zealand music charts. Y'all know where that's at. 28th on the Swiss Hit Parade charts, obviously. Third on the UK album charts. And number one in the UK RB charts. So, as I mentioned, it was triple platinum by the RIAA. It was regular platinum by the BPI, and it was also triple platinum by MC, and it was regular platinum by the RMNZ. And to be precise, this album sold around, or at least, 3,662,000 copies worldwide, at least 6 million. So, sales wise, this is probably his best album ever. Actually, it is his best album ever charts rise we'll get more on that stuff later so with all that and he probably come out with another one this year but anywho let's get on with the tracks first off before we get to that is there anything else i'm missing chart rise no i cover everything so let's get on with the tracks <laughs> so there's 16 tracks and i'm letting you guys know right now there's three skits so i can only give you a top three not a top five. First track is called pain is love skit now there's a difference we're gonna get more on that later Second track is called Dow M for Murder, followed by, which I'll get more of that later. Followed by Living It Up featuring Case, and that's one of the three singles. Next up is called The Ink featuring Cadillac, Todd, Black Child, and Ashanti. Now, before I get on with this, now this album came out sometime after Vita left Murder Ink, or they dropped her and they brought in Ashanti. So, yeah. There you go with that. Speaking of Asante, track number five is called Always On Time, featuring Asante. Some, some of you may remember that single. That's another single, by the way. Next up is Down Ass Bitch. Well, I believe there was a music video for that called Down Ass Chick, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. I may be wrong. I think I am wrong with that. That one features Charlie Baltimore. Y'all remember her? Track number seven is called Never Again, followed by Worldwide Gangsta, featuring Cadillac Ty, Black Child, Boo, and Gotti. Track number nine is called Leo, which is another skit, followed by I'm Real Murder Remix, in parentheses, featuring Jennifer Lopez, another single. And again, a small number, you may remember that single. Track number 11 is called Smoking and Riding, both words without the G, featuring Jody Mack and O1. Track number 12 is called X, featuring Missy Elliott and Treat, followed by Big Remo, which is another skit, the third skit in this album. Next up is Lost Little Girl, Followed by So Much Pain featuring Tupac. Yes, Tupac. And then the last track is called Pain Is Love, which is an actual song. So, let's get on with the three singles. So, the first thing off this album is called Living It Up, and it came out July 3rd, 2001, featuring Case, obviously. Whatever happened to it, I have no clue. Now, the song samples Stevie Wonder's 1982 hit, Do I Do. Thus, if you recall the hook, Do I Do. Now everybody gonna be living it up and say what I do. That song, yeah. 
Now, retired NBA All-Star Baron Davis makes an appearance in the video along with Sonny Leon, who is a former porn star actress, by the way. And the song was featured on the 2002 film Friday After Next, which was the worst one out of the three, by the way. But it was still funny, but desperately funny. Now, let's look at the charts real quick. Number six out in Australia, 20th out in the Islands, 29th in the Netherlands, 32nd in New Zealand, number one in the UK R&B charts, number five in the UK singles, number six in the US Billboard Hot 100, number four in the US Hot R&B slash hip hop songs, as well as number four in the US Hot Rap songs, equals number eight in the US Mainstream Top 40. <laughs> That's funny. And again, like I said, there was a music video for this song as well. Now, let's move on to the second single called Always On Time featuring Ashanti. That came out October 30th, 2001. I think at the time, it was still known as Devil's Night in Detroit before they changed it to Angel's Night. But anywho, the song became a worldwide hit and was Ashanti's first hot number, no, first hot 100 number one single in Ja Rule's second. The song spent two weeks at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 from February 23rd, 2002. It was followed by another Ja Rule duet, Ain't It Funny, Mother Remix by Jennifer Lopez featuring Ja Rule. we get more of that later. Apparently, that's a ja, uh, Jennifer Lopez song originally. we get more of that later. In 2009, Always On Time was named the 33rd most successful song of the 2000s on the Billboard Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs charts. Now, oh my gosh, the charts. Okay, let's get through this real quick. Third out in Australia, 22nd in the Ultra Top 50 Flanders, y'all know what country that is. 26th in the Ultra Top 50 Wallonia, 84th out in Brazil, 2nd in Canada, 45th in France, 22nd in Germany and uh, Ireland, excuse me. 29th in Italy, 11th in the Netherlands, 2nd in New Zealand, 17th in Norway, 45th in Sweden, 4th in the Switzerland, 2nd in the UK RB charts, 6th in the UK singles charts, Fifth in the U.S. Mainstream Top 40, number one in the following. Billboard Hot 100, Hot R&B Slash Hip Hop Songs, and Hot Rap Songs. So yeah, this was a very successful single. If I do say so myself. And of course, it had a music video. Now, let's move on to the third single. The third single is called I'm Real. And this one's confusing. So I'm going to try my very best to explain this. This single dropped September 4th, 2001. Okay. So, this is, this is again, this is weird. So, check this out. I'm Real is the name of two songs recorded by Jennifer Lopez, both primarily for her second studio album, J-Lo, which came out 2001. The original version was released as the album's fourth single. Ja Rule... Oh, yeah, it, they did change the name. Yeah, so it says Ja Rule of The Ink Records, formerly known as Murder Ink Records, wrote and was featured on a new version of the song entitled I'm Real Murder Remix which was featured on a reissue of J-Lo the album that is in July of 2001 on Lopez remix album J to the L-O the remixes which came out 2002 and Ja Rule's third studio album Pain is Love which is what I'm reviewing right now the original version was well received by music critics who complimented the 1980s S style and composition while the remix received mixed reviews for its lyrics. However, both songs have been appreciated for the use of the samples. So, yeah, this is crazy. The Murder Remix topped the Billboard Hot 100 for five non-consecutive weeks beginning September 8, 2001, and also topped the Hot 100 Airplay charts. The two songs are essentially different songs with the same title. Much controversy followed the song after its release. Two music, me ah, two music videos were made for the track with the first showcasing Lopez driving a motorcycle throughout the highway and featured a dance break while the second video features Ja Rule and Irv Gotti. Wow. And yeah, they're two different versions obviously. Like the first track was nearly five minutes long. The second version was like four minutes and 21 seconds. So... I'm trying to see, is there any other info on this, on these two songs rather? Okay. Following the release of I'm Real Mother Remix, Lopez's personality sound has shifted away from a pure pop or R&B to more of a hip hop song, rap so sound, I guess. <laughs> Job will praise Lopez while working with her on the track, stating, quote, she's mad cool. She goes in, knock the shit out, no problem. I love artists like that, end quote. 
and also said that her audience now wanted a different sound from her. And I quote, it's J-Lo now because of I'm Real. It's going to put her in another zone. After this one, they're going to be expecting hot crossovers or B joints from J-Lo. They ain't going to want the pop version of J-Lo no more. They're going to want the I'm Real version, end quote. Wu stated that he enjoyed working with Lopez and that it was a, and I quote, real collaboration by saying, going back to the quote, sometimes when you do a collaboration with an artist, it's not real collaborations. Send me a real here, I'll fly back here. Me and J-Lo record, uh, record, excuse me, was a real collaboration. So, again, there was two music videos for this, the two songs. Now, here's some controversy. So, this is interesting, this is a bit of a read, so let's get into it. Despite the success of I'm Real, there was controversy over the use of the single sample in the structure of the song. The song contains an uncredited sample from Yellow Magic's Orchestra, ah, Orchestra 1978 hit Firecracker, which was an electronic synth pop cover of Martin Denny's 1959 melody of the same name. Oh my gosh. While the remix, on the other hand, officially interpolates the Mary Jane Girls 1983 song All Night Long as well as borrowing the melody from Rick James Mary Jane. There have been reports that the Firecracker sample was originally planned to be used for Mariah Carey's Loverboy. According to the music publisher of Firecracker, Carey called to license a sample of the song which had never been sampled. Months before Lopez called to do the same, Carey felt that former husband music executive at Sony Music, aka Columbia Records, Tommy Motola, was interfering with her career by arranging for the sample to go to Lopez. Upset by the conduct of Lopez and her ex ah, and her ex-husband, Carrie featured a reference to the song on a remix of her single Love Aboard, her first single released by her record company at the time, Virgin Records. The verse came to her in the Bratz rap section, where she sings, or raps, and I quote, Hate on me much as you want to. You can't do what the fuck I do. Bitches be emulating me daily. Over the melody of Firecracker. Of Gotti, who produced the remix of I'm Real, featuring Ja Rule. Speak, and let me get this out the way. Of Gotti basically produced the whole album of Pain Is Love, by the way. Openly admitted during an interview with XXL Magazine that Motola contacted him with instructions to create a song that sounded exactly like a song he had made with Carrie for the Glitter soundtrack entitled If We, also featuring Ja Rule. Furthermore, some in the African American community were outraged by Lopez's use of the racial slur nigger in the mother remix. She said, and I quote, I tell the niggas mind their biz, but they don't hear me though. A free New York concert drew banner carrying protesters angry at the lyrics to her song, I'm Real. In response to this, Lopez said in between performances, for anyone to think or suggest that I'm racist is really absurd and hateful to me. The use of the word in the song, it was actually written by Ja Rule, it was not meant to be hurtful to anybody, end quote. Jennifer Lopez also said in a 2002 interview, interview, huh? <laughs> interview, Okay, so I'm quoting here. Neek type? Neek cross? It's not niggas, but it's like N I Q Q A S. No, I won these streets. Me and Ja were just proving it, end quote. Ja Rule also responded to this, defending Lopez by stating, and I quote, I think it's silly. I think the whole thing, like everything else, is being blown out of proportion. Rule said that Lopez was not the first Latino to use the word in a song and that it hadn't been in a issue previously and in it were something to let people get a chance to and i quote poker <laughs> so wow a lot of controversy with both of these um versions of these songs oh my gosh okay the charts oh my gosh the charts okay number three out in australia 25th in austria eighth in the flanders charts fifth in the wallonia charts six out in brazil and in canada eighth in danis Second in Dutch, ninth in the Billboard European Hot 100, 16th in the Finnish Singles Charts, that again, 3rd in the French Singles Charts, 11 out in Germany, 13th in Ireland, 16th in Italy, 3rd in New Zealand, 4th in Norwegian, 27th in Polis, 20th in Romanian, 7th in Scotland, 8th in Swedish, 6th in Swiss, 4th in the UK Singles Charts, number 1 
in the US Billboard Hot 100 and US Mainstream Top 40 and Billboard Rhythm Charts, 28th in the Latin Palm, uh, Pop Songs Charts, and second in the US Hot RB slash Hip Hop Songs Charts. By the end of the year 2001, it was 53rd out in Australia, 82nd in Flanders Charts, 62nd in Valonia Charts, 80th out in Germany, 29th in the Netherlands, 75th in Sweden, 57th in Switzerland, and 5th in the US Billboard Hot 100. By the end of the year 2002, it was 41st out in Australia and 44th in French. By the end of the decade, it was 80th out in Dutch and 30th in the US Billboard Hot 100. Oh my gosh. All time charts, 589th out in Australia and 988th out in the Switzerland. The single was platinum in Australia, gold in Belgium, France, and New Zealand, and silver in the United Kingdom. But nothing about the US. That's kind of interesting. So yeah there you go with that now there's one more single and finally i was right the single was down ass bitch i remember this being a single and the radio version was called down a star star chick so this one came out march 19 2002 and it was the last single released from this album and there is a music video for this as well now apparently there's a remix for this called down for you and it features Charlie Baltimore, Ashanti, and Vita, which is pretty interesting. I thought Vita was dropped from the record label, or she was on her way out, I guess. Now, charts rise. 37 out in Australia, 11 out in Belgium, 55th in the Netherlands, 75th in Switzerland, 91st in the UK singles, 21st in the US Billboard Hot 100, 8th in the US Billboard Hot R&B slash hip hop so uh, songs, and 5th out in the US Billboard Hot rap tracks. So, yeah down for you i feel like that song is on this album and it's not okay now let's get on with my all-time favorite songs off of this album and worldwide gangster is the worst song off this album i ain't saying the song is terrible but it's the worst song off this album moving on up we got pain is love the beat in the title don't match i i have to say i heard the beat and then i'm like i look at the title i'm like um yeah that don't really go together <laughs> it really don't but again it's not bad though i'm real mother remix rather you know I, I obviously remember the single and you know it wasn't bad original time same thing but i like that one more than i'm real mother remix now next best song off this album is x and here's the thing with x now in the pain is love version first of all the title is just the letter x However, this song was also on another album called Violated Volume 2.0, rather. And I got that album. I may review that next week. And that one was under Violated Loud and Sony and also involved Herb Gotti as, you know, as far as producers. And the name of the song on that album was X, as in EX. And it still featured the same people, Missy Elliott, Ja Rule, and Tweet. And again, what happened to Tweet? But anywho, the song itself was pretty good. Not bad. I thought there was a music video for that. Or it made the radio. I forgot. Anywho, the next best song off this album is The Ink. And if you were to hear the beat, first of all, the beat is cool. But Cadillac Todd sounds out of place with his yelling style. Like, if you heard this dude rap and you heard this beat, you would go, why is he on this track? He's so out of place. Like, they obviously called The Ink, so he had to be on the track. So, here's a uh, quick solution. Change the title rap about something else because Cadillac Ty is out of play he do not match that beat he really don't Lost Little Girl is really cool I like that one Smoking and Riding is semi mellow so I like that one obviously Living It Up which is another single that one's cool So Much Pain featuring Tupac is semi mellow and I really like the ending because they had that chick sing out though I think that's a sample but I really like it now because this is 16 tracks and three of them are skits i could give you a top three not a top five the best track off this album down ass bitch or down ass chick whichever one you want to roll with featuring charlie baltimore a mellow out joint and y'all know how i am with the mellow out joints i really like them and this is why i like pain is love because they got a good number of mellow joints and this one is near the top of the list so i really like that this track right here down ass bitch Second best track off this album, Never Again, another mellow out joint. And it was close between Never Again and Down As Bitch, as far as what is the second best track off this album. I went with Never Again because it was more smooth and chill. 
while down as bitch was like it was it was still mellow but it wasn't as smooth as never again it was like a step or two behind it so that's why i went with never again as the second best track off this album first best track off this album down in for murder the sample was also used by cameron and dipset even though i believe Ja used this sample first between the three. Right, I heard Ja use this sample between the three first, rather. But yeah, that track is obviously dope. Love that track, man. In my opinion, the best track off this album. So yeah, Dow M from the best track off this album. Now let's get on with some professional ratings. Metacritic gave it 59 out of 100. All Music gave it 4 out of 5 stars. The AV Club gave it, wow, unfavorable. Entertainment Weekly, though, gave it a B. Plus. Hip Hop DX gave it 4 out of 5 stars. LA Times gave it 3.5 out of 4 stars. Pop Matters gave it a mixed review. Rap Reviews gave it 7.5 out of 10. And Rolling Stones gave it 3 out of 5 stars. A lot of mixed reviews here. So, what do I think about this album? Well, first of all, this album also received a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Album in 2002, but lost to Skank no Skank Oni, rather, by the Outcast. So, here's what I think about this album. Like I said, charts, uh, not charts rise, sales rise, this is his best album ever. Certifications, this is his best album ever. Chart rise, this is his best album ever. But overall, it's not his best album ever, obviously. It's more on, this is the beginning of R&B Ja Rule. And this was like the beginning of the downward spiral for him. And everybody started to label him soft. Obviously, Vinny Vetti Vici, his debut album, everybody was messing around with Ja Rule. Rule 336, everybody was still messing around with Ja Rule. But Pain and Love, yeah, it kind of went down. So, here's what I think about this album. I like the album. I had to give this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I, I like Pain and Love. Like I said, uh, a lot of mellow joints, so I like that. The problem is, this is Ja Rule. And Ja Rule and mellow out and... But okay, let me rephrase that. Ja Wu in a crap ton of mellow joints in one album does not go rare for his image. And it, it showed, you know, from that point going forward. It really showed, especially with that beef with 50 Cent. But I really like Pain is Love. I think it's his second best album he came out with. Yes, Over Vinny, Vetti Vici. Even though that's supposed to be a good one. I need to listen to it again. I heard it. I need to listen to it again. But Wu 3D6 without question his best one. Without question. So yeah, 3.75 out of 5 stars. I recommend you download it and keep it. So, yeah, there you go with that, man. All right, so with all that out the way, y'all know who this is. This is the new Jay Gatsby, a.k.a. the new Stephen A. Smith, saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.